I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Unless, of course, you know, you miss a jump and you land in the lava. That might be some big... Normandy, our savior! Appreciate you. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty, right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? It's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect video. I've recorded this video like seven times, at least. In fact, I did it at the beginning of this month that I'm currently in, and it's already the end. I've already been to Disney, and I talk about how I... The point is, <laughs> I've recorded about 12 episodes after this one that are just stuck until this one comes out, and I, apologies. Anyways, this is also the first episode for you where we're using the green screen. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, but spoiler, there's about 12 episodes after this that are using the green screen no matter what you say. So, uh, <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, so, the episode just kept getting corrupted and uh, the audio wasn't recording right. And uh, anyways, the point is, in today's episode, we are gonna recruit Dossier the Warlord, and I'm very excited for it because it's a very fun episode, and there is a ton of action. I've heard from people in the comments that the last episode, the Firewalker DLC, was boring. And you're right. Take it up with Bioware. I don't know what, what do you want from me. Point is, today will be better. So, I want to reintroduce you, because it's been a while, to Corey Shepard, the level 11 vanguard, the colonist from Menduar who was attacked by slavers, but has grown up to become someone that the galaxy can rely on. The entire galaxy, not just humans, although she does have a vested interest in the preservation of human colonies, which is exactly why we're working for Cerberus to stop the Collector. So, in today's episode, we're recruiting Warlord Okir. Why don't we why don't we go ahead and why don't we go ahead and look at that? But first, I want to show off our build that we have right now, which is heavy charge, maxed out, and champion. Those two together mean pretty much that we have shields all the time, and you're going to see that be incredibly useful later on in the video. So let's go ahead and let's look at the journal and see Dossier the Warlord. We're recruiting Dr. Okir. Why? Because Dr. Okir is ancient and has a millennia of combat and strategic experience. But in his uh, in his pursuit to cure the genophage potentially from the Krogan race, he has contacted the collectors, and rumor has it he has collector technology that might be of use to us, and he knows potentially a lot about them. However, he's currently in a Blue Suns camp on Corliss, and we don't know if he's a prisoner there, if he's working for them. We have no idea. So we're going to head today to Corliss in the Emir system, which we're already in. I've scanned everything already, and I have to say, Gregus here is probably the only planet that's worth scanning. So let's go ahead and head to Corliss here. We're gonna enter the orbit. Corliss is a trash planet, legit. Uh, it's covered in trash. The atmosphere is horrible. Smog is everywhere. It reminds me kind of of the planet that Hulk and Thor are on in Thor Ragnarok. Also, it ranks second in murder per capita in the Terminus systems, and we know how deadly the Terminus systems is, so this is, like, not a good planet. So let's go there. But as always, we can't go there alone. We're going to have to pick our squad, who's going to be Garrus and Mor I'm just kidding. I wish. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to go with Morden. I know I say unfortunately, but it makes a lot of sense storyline-wise. He's our head scientist. He's a Salarian who is in charge of making sure the genophage keeps working. This guy knows what he's doing, and it makes sense for him to go and potentially see what this Warlord Akir is doing, this Dr. Akir, who's trying to cure his genophage. I mean, it's kind of important that he goes to this event. So, we're gonna bring Morden, who is completely useless when it comes to battle here, but is very strong at the very end of this world incredibly strong so we're gonna take him with us now i would recommend garris or miranda like i would any time in this game miranda is incredibly powerful no matter what you bring her to as a vanguard she's just she's far and away probably your best squad mate when it comes to actual battle garris has a sniper rifle which is going to be incredibly useful on corliss because all of the enemies are miles away from us and as a vanguard we won't be able to touch them jacob it Kasumi has Shadow Strike that we can send her out and overload, which is very useful because we're going to, be going to be dealing with a ton of shielded enemies. But I'm not bringing any of them. I'm bringing Zaid, who is 
probably less useful than everybody else. However, he has a sniper rifle, so we get to take advantage of that. He has disruptor ammo, which can take down a shield with one shot, depending on if he actually hits them or not. And he's one of the founders of the Blue Suns. It makes sense to bring him to Cordless, so that's what we're going to do. We're not going to deal with putting his uh, points into anything. He's fine with what he has. I wouldn't say disruptor ammo needs to be capped out. We're going to wait so that eventually we can max out his mercenary veteran. And as for our boy Morden here, we're going to go ahead and put a point into Solarian Scientist, just helping his health and weapon damage and shields just a little bit. And that's pretty much all we're going to do for him. As for weapons, I highly, highly, highly recommend switching to the Arc Projector Heavy Weapon. It is incredibly good at dealing with enemies that have shields, and guess what we're dealing with? Enemies with shields the entire time. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Everybody else, looks good to me. The dossier doesn't say if Okir is on this planet by choice. Assume hostiles. And orders over loudspeaker. Classy. Stay focused. We're looking for a Krogan warlord. Not just any Krogan warlord. A millennia-old Krogan warlord who is also intelligent enough to be a doctor to save his species. That is rare, and that is somebody that we're going to want on our team. Now, we're hearing a lot from this loudspeaker person here. The leader, it seems, of the Blue Suns here on Corliss. And it seems like she's building an army of some kind. So as we proceed over here, we're going to be dealing with a lot of enemies who apparently we caught off guard. We're going to go ahead and charge immediately in here. Go ahead and strip them of armor. We're going to concussive shot this guy here. We're going to wait for charge. Get our shields back. We're going to incinerate this guy, which is going to just... Woo! That was a little... Listen, I played that... Oh, you're still alive! Okay, he's dead. But I played that not great, but hey, we still made it. The whole point of, of us with our, with our heavy charge and everything is that we can do stuff like that and just get it back. But as we proceed over, we find a wounded Merc here. Let's see if uh, he can fill us in on Corliss. Shit. Shit. I won't stop bleeding. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... You son of a bitch. Suck it up, soldier. I've seen worse. He doesn't need to know that. I knew it wasn't berserkers. Ah, not at range. You're mercs or alliance. I'm not. I'm not telling you anything. Hmm. I wonder if this would change your a nice mind. Application of metagel ready to go. But if you'd rather, I just keep walking. Son of a bitch. I just. I don't know anything. I just shoot the overflow from the labs. The old Krogan up there. He, He's really been cleaning house lately. Jador hired him to make her an army, but the Krogan he creates are insane. So we use them for live ammo training. It's all crap. I don't get paid enough to goddamn bleed out. Outpost 4, Jador wants us to move. We need coordinates on that Krogan back. And we have the Paragon option. Just get rid of them, buddy. I want your friends gone. Understand? Uh, patrol? The last group dispersed. Lost sight five minutes ago. Dispersed? Jador will be pissed. She wanted a show. You asked for a report. You got it. Dispersed. Understood. Returning to the labs. There. You see? I'm helping. So it sounds like this Jador is the leader of the Blue Suns on Corliss. What kind of defenses does she is have? Jador's lab heavily guarded? There are big guns to keep ships away. We're not outfitted to fight goddamn commandos. And more importantly, what about Dr. Okir? Have you seen Okir? Does he know about all this? We can't go in the labs, but everyone sees what happens when the Krogan come out. I've shot hundreds. They're crazy, mindless. Anyone up there, they know what's going on. Why specifically Krogan? What is Jador planning to do with all these Krogan? Replace us, probably. I sure wouldn't want to see an army of them coming at me. Only she can't control them. They aren't supposed to be crazy, but they're Krogan. How smart are they to start? Well, it sounds like she's unsuccessful, potentially, because Dr. Okir is making her unsuccessful. If you start limping now, you might find a shady spot before you bleed out. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh. He just about pissed himself. 
Some people need a heavy hand. Come on. That's why you bring Zaid, my friends. That's why you bring Zaid, because he's got some awesome dialogue. Now, as we proceed forward, we're actually going to make sure that Zaid has Disruptor ammo. We'll find a dead Krogan on the ground, but more importantly, we're going to be dealing with some troopers up here. We're going to go ahead and switch to the Arc Projector. See the absolute power that the Arc Projector is able to do. Now, this is why Corliss, as a Vanguard, is actually just awful. We have no way of closing this gap to get over to them. You can't. Unfortunately, that sniper rifle actually killed that guy before anything else did. So that's kind of the big unfortunate part of this level is that you can't charge. You can't do anything for a big majority of it. We'll actually go ahead and hit these guys up here. Hopefully be able to just concussive shot this guy. That will send him off the bridge, immediately killing him, which is why that's super useful. Obviously, if you have another biotic power that will do something similar, that could be really useful. Like, say, Jacob's pole. That would work. Now, as we take care of those, we'll see all of these poor dead Krogan on the ground, which we were warned about. That's what the guy told us. But we'll have even more troopers here. And get used to fighting these enemies because you're going to be seeing a ton of them. We're going to go ahead and concussive shot that guy, sending him off, and incineration blast that, which will kill him, sending him off. Here we can grab a metagel, which is actually just replacing one that we used in a previous mission. These poor Krogan, man, they did not... They just got destroyed. Anyways, as we proceed over here, we're going to have more troopers and, finally, the enemy I've been talking about, the heavy. The heavies are just, just, there's just so many of them. Uh, we're going to be dealing with them constantly. We're going to go ahead and concussive shot this guy, hopefully sending him off the platform. Perfect. And incineration blast him. And as soon as those ones are down, we can come over and start dealing with these others on this side. We need to be kind of careful here because Morden can actually screw us and uh, get in our way. And the explosion from our teammates will actually send... Ooh, that sucked. What is happening? So that will allow us to zap those. And hopefully that killed them all. Yeah, looks like it did. Perfect. You can see why the arc projector is so strong. I mean, even for just this little area where you just can't charge no matter what, it's so useful. And, of course, as soon as we get over here, we're going to find that there's a Krogan here. Looks to be on our side. Let's go ahead and concussive shot that trooper, hopefully sending him off. That rocket almost hitting him in the head. Go ahead and... Yep, perfect. We're going to go ahead and start using this side for cover. Go ahead and hope that we can hit this guy. Perfect. And then concussive him off the edge. And he's now dead. You can see how strong, I mean, the concussive and being able to use the Geth shotgun and all that does make it very, very, uh, <laughs> not easy, right? Because it would be a lot better if we had somebody that could, you know, overload or, or shadow strike. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to this tank grown Krogan. smell like this world seven night cycles and I have felt only the need to kill but you something makes me speak that thing's only a week old apparently they must breed them full size ready to kill not much improvement over regular mercs if they need training bread to kill no I kill because my blood and bone tell me to but it's not why I was flushed from Glass Mother. Survival is what I hear in my head against the enemy that threatens all my kind. But I failed, even before waking. That is what the voice in the water said. That is why I wait here. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that this Krogan is only seven days old? How can you speak if you're only a week old? There was a scratching sound in my head, and it became the voice. It taught things I would need. Walking, talking, hitting, shooting. Then the voice said I was not perfect, and the teaching stopped. And now I am here. Interesting. Raised, then rejected. Control group, failed test? I don't know, but I am not perfect. Hmm. What about that voice? 
Okir's voice? Did he speak to you while you were in your tank? I heard the voice. Not like now, with ears. Inside. I called it Father. It liked that. But it was disappointed. I'm not what it needs me to be. A breeding program? Trying to escape Genophage effects? Escape? Escape was never whispered. Survive, resist, ignore. Hmm. But you failed. How did you disappoint the voice? I don't know. It was decided before I left Tank Mother. I was not perfect. If Mercenary was correct, Krogan prone to mental instability. I don't know of that, but I'm not perfect. I destroyed Saren's cure. How does Okir expect these Krogan to ignore the genophage if not by curing it? Uncertain. Likely irrelevant. Appears Okir has had no success. Yeah, but he's close, it seems. I. The important thing is, is we need to know about what we have to face coming coming next. You're supposed to be part of a mercenary army. Do you remember Jador? I know that name. It causes anger, but also laughter. It is not a name that will be sung when we march. I don't know what that means, but I have heard it many times. Interesting. So Jador hired Okir to make her Krogan, and he's actually working against her? I like this guy. Can you show me the laboratory? I need to speak with Okir. The glass mother she is up past the broken parts behind many of you fleshy things i will show you yeah yeah krogan's are strong we get it I'm so glad we got Fleshy that line. Things are slow when big things are in your way. You could have run or tried to fight your way back to the labs. Why stay here? I am waiting. The voice told me if they come, I fight. But I will not run. And I will not follow. I am not perfect, but I have purpose. I must wait until called. Released. So, funny story. I have recorded this episode, I think I mentioned this, a thousand times I've had to re-record this one, which is why it's, it feels, uh, to me, this episode feels bad. It, the point is, I every single time I've done it, Morden speaks instead of Zaid. They sh must share the same uh, level of priority in this mission, so Zaid, we got to hear Zaid respond to that, which is so much better. Maneuver. Keep it together. So much better than what, what our buddy Morden says. Anyways, we'll get 2,000 credits there. And as we proceed forward, finally, we get to show off the power of a Vanguard and, and just absolutely kick some butt. Let's go ahead and charge here, get our shields back, and we can just go ahead and just shrek these guys. Let's go ahead and actually concussive shot. Uh, it's like, stop me from... We'll go ahead and get that shield back. Unfortunately, that didn't work for some reason. I don't... Here, let me show you the power of the Vanguard. Immediately not able to do anything. So we're going to charge this Krogan Berserker. This is what I mean here. And then we're going to actually just bypass it, keep running, and we're going to take this left side path here, which is actually going to put us face to face with another Krogan that we're going to charge. And this will actually put us at a point where with that radio right there, the Krogan are going to stop charging us. If you do not proceed to this point, the Krogan will actually just keep spawning. We're gonna go ahead and charge this. Hopefully send him flying. And from far away, we can incineration blast and charge once again, taking him out. Now the Krogan are done spawning. They won't spawn, but we do still have to deal with the one that is existing over here. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And then, see, I should have just, you know what? Goodbye, get out of here. Anyways, if you go the right hand side, you're not going to have time to switch uh, there, too many Krogan are going to come, and you're you're going to get potentially overwhelmed. Um, but we took the left-hand side, which actually allowed us to get through here very, very quickly. And there's also a med kit that we can grab on this right-hand side here, and a bunch of thermal clips so you can fill up. The left-hand path is definitely faster, especially if you can just charge straight across like we did. And then you only have to deal with the two Krogan and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Over here, we can get 2,000 platinum, which is going to be very useful. And we'll notice, so what's happening here is that these 
Krogan are being released and it's not Shador doing it. Somebody else is releasing these Krogan. Probably Dr. Okir, who apparently has an issue with Shador, which is good for us. And we're going to go ahead and bypass this door, giving us access to the next area, which is hopefully a little bit closer to the lab that we need to get to. Looking for some ears. There we go. There's the ears. Belts. So easy to bypass doors. I don't get nervous at all for those. Now, PDAs and stuff that you have to hack. Hacking stresses me out. Anyways, we're going to proceed up here. Very interesting. Seems like Shador isn't helping right now. Right here, we can grab some power cells. Incredibly useful if you're using the arc projector like I am. Grab that meta gel. And even better than that, we can grab a sniper rifle damage upgrade that we will be able to research when we get back into the Normandy. Now, as you proceed through this door, get ready for one hecka of a fight. We're going to immediately hit this guy, send him flying, get into cover, and switch to the arc projector, which is hopefully going to save our butt here. That will... S Whoa! See what I mean? All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get back into cover. Perfect. Unfortunately, that arc projector only hitting the, the, the one heavy that we had there. There we go. We can hit those ones. And we're going to actually see if we can concussive shot. This will put him down. Not enough to hit him off the edge, but you need to be very careful in this section. Killed it is one. very... Nice job, Morden. It is very, very easy for them to eliminate your team, and we don't want that to happen. Anyways, once those guys are taken down on that side, we're going to switch back to the arc projector and get ready for even more to appear here. Which is going to scan... And hit those guys. And then we can go ahead and incineration blast. And get this guy with a inferno grenade. Then we need to be careful because we're going to be dealing with even more. Uh, these are two different types of heavies. Whoop. There we go. Woo. Let's get in a cover here. These are two different types of heavies. One of which we have not encountered yet. We're going to go ahead and charge this guy just to get our shields back. And then we'll go ahead and con uh, concussive him just so that he's knocked away. So these are two different ones. This one here, without the helmet, will actually recharge its shields. So we want to take that out as quickly as possible. And also getting a Centurion at the same time. Centurions are pretty deadly because they have, uh, I believe, shotguns? We'll go ahead and we're actually going to charge him. And then we can concussive him off, and that will kill him. And then we can go ahead and charge this guy eliminating him as well. And then right on the ground here, we can find a PDA that we can hack. Perfect. These stress me out. Just give me the one I need. Just give me the one I need. Oh, see what I mean? Oh God, it stresses me out so much. 4,000 credits from that PDA though. And we were able to eliminate the enemies. You're kind of starting to see the power of the Vanguard. Go ahead, use this door, and then we are going to head up these stairs, and we're going to have the option at the top of here. Let's actually make sure that everyone is using the same weapons that they need to be using. Uh, we have an option to go to the left here or to the right. We are going to go to the right because it's going to give us the most cover. We're going to immediately hit that trooper there. Watch out for the heavies that just came pouring in. You can see the just the rain that they're doing there. Hit with that, and then we're going to just try to focus on these guys as much as we can to take them out first. Blue Trooper's down. We're going to go ahead and switch to our Arc Projector. We're going to go ahead and wait for this. Hit that guy. That's going to hit all three of them. Perfect. We're going to watch out for this, hoping that our buddy there, unfortunately losing Morden in the process. We're going to go ahead and charge this Legionnaire. Send him flying. Get back into cover here. Watch out for this incendiary that. Can't reach the target. Woo! Go ahead, charge this heavy, turn around, and immediately start shooting at this Legionnaire, which has restored its, not only restored its shields, but then also has some buddies that came to help it. We're going to go ahead, charge here, so that we can restore our own shields. Get into cover in this L shape here, which is going to help just a bit. Inferno Grenade, just so that we can stun them just for a second, allow us to kind of get into position here. We're going to switch back to our Arc Projector here, because I think if we are able to hit one of those, it should bounce off and hit most. Go ahead and wait for this guy. Inferno grenade him. Charge him. 
see if we can wait for charge. Charge this guy. He'll go flying off the edge. And then all we have left is these guys over here. And let's see if we can concussive shot him. Maybe not off the edge, but close enough. There we go. Not not the smoothest, but that's actually a very difficult room to deal with. Uh, I in the in the countless other times that I've recorded this episode, uh, that 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 room killed me a lot. We can get a uh, hundred credits there or a meta gel. Luckily for us, we don't. We're trying not to use unity, so. It's not bad. We're full on credits or full on ammo. And then uh, right over here, we have a Blue Sun's corpse that we can go ahead and loot for 2,000 credits. We're going to immediately run forward here. We got two troopers that we have to deal with getting to cover. And we need to be a little bit careful here because the enemies will actually kind of rush us at this point. You'll see them start to come in here. We're gonna go ahead and charge this, eliminate him. Eliminate that one. Watch out for the heavies that are starting to populate. Charge this one. Take him out. And then we're going to use this for cover. Hopefully switch to our arc projector because we can use that again. Watch out for all of this heavy. And then I'm hoping that we can. There we go. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and charge this legionnaire. Sending him not off the edge, unfortunately, but close enough. Go ahead and melee him just to get him out of here. See ya. Charge this one. And then we can concussive him off. Watch out for the heavies that we have over here. Remember, the ones without helmets will recharge their... I think they're dead. They're dead. Wow, that went really well. Huh, dude, I was just saying. We can get some power cells there so we can use more of our arc projector because it's so good against shields. And we have a wall that we... Our wall. A safe... A wall safe that we can access for 4,000 credits. In case you couldn't tell, I've played this episode a lot. And uh, I don't remember what I've said in each one now. Doesn't sound like that ended well for that guy over there. Over here, we can hack another PDA for more credits. There we go. 4,000 credits is ours. God, it stresses me out. Damn PDAs. This guy just got toasted. Tell you, I get nervous every single time I do that. So we're gonna proceed this way to this green door and climb these stairs and look at how disgusting Corliss is. Oh, what a trash heap and it smells like burnt rubber, I'm telling you. Anyways, I uh, am so disappointed that the last episode that I recorded of this didn't record the audio because it was such a good episode and I, I, I cleaned house. This episode, not so much, man, not so much. I'm dying all constantly. These guys are shredding me. Anyways. We're going to go ahead and charge these, get our shields back. We got more troopers as always, because that's just part of the game when you are playing this. Whew. Oh, I got a little nervous there. I, I, I'm playing a little aggressive because I, because I've done this episode so many times. Maybe need to not do that. Anyways, we're going to wait for Morden's shield to come back a little bit. There we go. We're going to put him and our boy Zaid over there. We're going to go ahead and do two arc projector zaps there, which is going to hopefully take out most of these legionnaires' health. And then there's also a heavy on the other side here that we're going to hopefully take out with this uh, Inferno grenade, which actually isn't working. Let's see if I can get it to... There we go. Getting a cover here. Watch out for these guys. Incineration blast them, which is going to kill both of those. Charge this guy. Send him flying. And then we're going to use this for cover and watch out for the two troopers that are on the top here. Fortunately, that guy did not die. Going to send Zaid. Let's actually send Zaid over there. Actually, I lied to you. What we're going to do instead, we're going to take out one of these troopers. Charge him. We're actually going to put Zaid and them into cover up here. Hopefully they're able to do it without dying. Good. So as we come over here, we're going to see that there's more Centurions and Heavies that we're going to go ahead and zap. Which should take care of most of them. So now we're out of heavy ammo, but that's actually fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Centurion, killing him. And then we have another Centurion over here that we have to deal with. Unfortunately, I don't know what Zaid's doing, but he's not helping me, that's for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and Inferno this guy. And then we can Incineration Blast. 
Now, this looks like a great spot to charge, but it's actually not because there's more enemies on this side over here that are going to be taking us out and flanking us. So we're just going to be a little bit careful as we proceed over here with Zaid and Morden going over there. Seeing if we can come over here. Trooper taken down. Centurion over here. And there's more. There's Centurions and a Heavy that's over here as well. So we're going to watch out for that. We're going to come over right here now that that Trooper's taken out. Watch out for this Trooper that's here. We're going to go ahead and Incineration Blast him. And uh, let's Inferno. Let's Inferno Grenade him as well. Watch out for the Heavy. Switch back to our Geth Plasma Shotgun because it's so good. We're going to Inferno at... Just so it stuns for a second. Charge again. Sending the heavy flying off the edge. We're going to go ahead and incinerate. Perfect. Woo! One of the harder areas of this map, as uh, or this world, this mission, as a... As a vanguard is now done. That is a that is a tough spot, let me tell you. So we're gonna go ahead, use this door here. It's just it's too bad because you can't you just can't get across. As we come into this room, don't shoot. You know me. we do know that person. You can go ahead and open this medical station there. And uh let's go ahead and talk to Ranathanoptis. But first, let's go ahead and hack this terminal. There we go, four thousand credits. And then let's see. You guys might remember Rana from Vermeer back in Mass Effect 1. I shut down the security cams as soon as I saw it was you. Never thought I'd say it, but I'm glad it's you shooting up the place. Sorry, Rana Thanoptis. You let me go when you destroyed Saren's lab on Vermeer. Had to outrun a nuke in a utility pod, but it's still a second chance. You know, it did, doesn't ring a bell. I don't remember that. Probably best if you were in Saren's lab. Yeah, I'm not proud of what went on there. But I'm using what we learned for the greater good. Not for the mercs. Jador's on a standard power trip. But Okir is trying to do something good, even if his methods are a little extreme. Everyone deserves a second chance, right? And sometimes giving one pays off. I take care of my debts. Oh yeah? Why don't you explain Okir's work then? What is Okir trying to do here? It's complicated. Jador wants a private army, but Okir mostly ignores her. He's running the project for his own reasons. I created a mental imprint routine to educate his tank bread. Most don't get through it. He dumps them for some reason. He wants to help his people, but he's not looking for a genophage cure, and he's not going for numbers. That's all I know. What does that mean, then? Finding you in a place like this makes me think letting you go was a mistake. You don't want that. We agree on that. Don't worry. I plan on staying as far away from anything to do with you as possible. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to run like hell before you blow the place or something. I know how you work. Smart. Should have killed her. Too much knowledge without ethical boundaries. Yeah, Morden, I don't really know if you're one to talk there, bud. Anyways, we'll get some Paragon points for that interaction, and we're going to proceed into the next room and finally come face to face with the Krogan warlord, Dr. Okir. I've watched your progress. It's about time. The batteries on these tanks will not wait while you play with these idiotic mercs. I take it you're Okir. You don't seem particularly caged or grateful that I'm here. You may claim to be here to help, but the formerly deceased shepherd is not a sign of gentle change. Surprised? Old Krogan should know you. I'm sure Rana has already revisited your actions on Vermeer. And I bet you will too. I'm sure you're eager to retell the story. Such a tale. Saren, the Spectre Traitor, threatens the return of the Krogan Horde by curing the Genophage undoing the gentle genocide of the Turians and Salarians. But before Saren can deliver his endless troops, Inrod Shepard securing victory through nuclear fire. I like that part. It has weight. I didn't have a lot of room for finesse. If there had been any other solution, I'd have considered it. But I approve. Saren's pale horde were not true Krogan. Numbers alone are nothing. The mistake of an outsider. 
One that these mercenaries have also made. I gave their leader my rejects for her army, but she grows impatient. It's time for you to take me out of here. Personal issues irrelevant. Here for the collectors. I see. Yes. Collector attacks have increased. A human concern. My requests were focused elsewhere. I acquired the knowledge to create one pure soldier. With that, I will inflict upon the Genophage the greatest insult an enemy can suffer. To be ignored. Wait. What does that mean? So you don't want to cure the Genophage? Contrary to what survivors claim, the Genophage does not produce strong Krogan. The only quality it filters is the ability to survive the Genophage. For every thousand stillborn, too many weaklings live. Every survivor is branded as precious. That's produced more cuddling than your collective human teats. Uh, 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 I okay. say, let us carry the genophage. Let a thousand die in a clutch. We will defeat it by climbing atop our dead. That is the Krogan way. I thought the Krogan ideal was a return to the numbers that threatened the galaxy. We will not need numbers. My soldier is a template. It is a greater threat than all the phantom siblings that would have been at its flank. The galaxy still bears the scars of the Horde, but it will learn to fear the lands. What I love about Dr. Rokir is how poetic he is. You're just as cruel and manipulative as those who released the genophage on your people. Perhaps, but I will restore the Krogan, and my soldier will not provoke a nuclear response as a cure or Horde would. My legacy is perfection, with each pure Krogan reaching higher by standing on our dead. They will exceed, but not forget. What about the rejects? Your search for the perfect soldier created a lot of failures. You don't care about them? I feel no one. My rejects are exactly what Jador asked for. She simply lacks the ability to command. They are strong, healthy, and useless to me. I need perfection. If a few thousand are rejected, so be it. My work will purify the Krogan. We will not be restored. We will be renewed. Interesting. What about the Collectors, though? The reason why we're even really recruiting this guy? What did you get from the Collectors? I need whatever you know about them. They are strange. So isolated, yet very available when your sacrifice is big enough. I gave them mini Krogan. I may have information for you, but the tech was consumed in my prototype after I determined how to use it without killing the subjects. The deaths were unfortunate, but I only need one success to start the process. And did you do that? Your methods are extreme, but you know how to deconstruct a threat. Will you help us? Perhaps I can strike a deal to secure passage, but my prototype is not negotiable. It is the key to my legacy. Attention, I have traced the Krogan release. Oh, here, of course. I'm calling blank slate on this project. Gas these commandos and start over from Okir's data. Flush the tanks. She's that weak will. She'll kill my legacy with a damn valve. Shepard, you want information on the Collectors? Stop her. She'll try to access contaminants in the storage bay. You could just start over like she plans to. What's the big deal? This tank is pure. It involved as much trial as data. Starting over will not duplicate it. It must survive. Jador will be with the rejected tanks. Kill her. I will stay and do what must be done. What exactly is that, Warlord of Kier? Shepherd. I do what I must to save my legacy. And we get eight Paragon points for that, and it looks like we are going to have one hecka of a battle on our, ha on our hands here. And apparently this Krogan in this tank is a pure Krogan. Whatever that means, it can't be great. Anyways, come over here and we can bypass this lab terminal, and I highly suggest doing that. 
because that's going to give us yet another research and this one being incredibly useful this. for what we're about to do which is recruit a krogan krogan vitality very interesting apparently once we research that that krogan's gonna have more health anyways we have one heck of a fight on our hands here we're going to stop shador finally come face to face with her and see if we can stop her so we'll come into this room oh oops We'll come up through and we'll find that there's Jador sitting here shooting rockets at us. More than that, she's also going to have these Krogan Berserkers that are going to be coming at us. Which, luckily for us, we have a ton of people that can deal with Krogan Berserkers because we have so many incendiary. But we also have her mech that we need to watch out for. She's going to keep spawning. She'll actually spawn about four. Uh, she'll spawn about four of her... Of the Krogan. But we can actually get through this by only dealing with one if we're able to kill Jador quickly. Jador dead. Now we need to watch out for this Krogan. Only one remains. The other ones won't spawn now. And that means that the only thing that we have to deal with now is the Ymir mech. Now, that isn't really a strategy that you can do if you're dealing with... Uh, potentially, let me switch to the Locust here. Wish I had the Arc Projector for this fight, I'll tell you that. It's not really a strategy you can do if you're anything other than a Vanguard, to be, you know, totally honest with you. And the only reason, the only reason a Vanguard's able to do it is just because we can, we can keep our shields up almost all the time. Uh, especially when you're dealing with just one enemy, like Jador, because she can't fire fast enough for, to deplete our, similar to the, whoop, there's actually a few enemies that we don't have to deal with really being too much of an issue. Because they shoot so infrequently, and you'll actually see a really good case of that coming up uh, fairly shortly. So Ymir Mech is down. There we go. Jador defeated. Ymir Mech taken down. The only two Krogan that we had to deal with. Uh-oh. Yeah, I would say. So we're going to go ahead and in here. Now, something else about this fight. We did it super quickly, so I wasn't able to explain this. But all of these pods over here will open, and four Krogan total will come out. You kill Jador, you only have to deal with however many Krogan have spawned up to that point. They'll stop spawning. She's not sending them out anymore. So that's what we do. That's, that's my strategy for that fight. But the other way that you would deal with it is you would just keep alternating. So there's two Krogan on one side and then two Krogan on the other on the on the other side. And you would just alternate cover and take those guys out while using the tanks to block you from Shador's rockets and the Ymir Max rockets. Anyways, as we proceed into the lab. Here, unfortunately dying to the toxin that was put in the lab, but him saving his perfect soldier. Let's go ahead and see what this is about. He killed thousands of his own people, but he sacrificed himself to save this. Delusional. Unlikely one Krogan, however strong, could have impact Okir wanted. Am almost certain. Suggest leaving it. Hmm. Afraid he'll make your genophage obsolete? No, but Krogan genetically dangerous, socially dangerous as well. Have enough enemies without adding this. Normandy, Okir is a no-go, but we have a package that needs retrieval. And he's a big one. So we failed at recruiting Warlord Okir. However, maybe we have a better ally in his perfect soldier is grunt. We leveled up. Level 12. The cloning facility has been destroyed. Okir is dead, but his son was recovered. Loss of Okir could be a problem. We'll allow Shepard to decide whether to activate the Krogan. And we get the power up. The all Krogan squad members get 25% health. Guess what? 
We got the sniper rifle damage. We got 40,000 credits and 2,000 platinum. Not a bad dossier. Bringing the Krogan to study makes sense, but I have concerns about waking it. Yeah, you've said that a few times now. A normal Krogan is dangerous. This one was created and likely educated by a madman. I see everyone's enjoying the new paperweight. Concerns? We don't know anything about it, Commander. I know. You don't find that interesting? Krogan fight well at close quarters. Perhaps awakening him in a confined space wouldn't be prudent. Noted. The cargo hold is safe enough while I decide what to do with him. So apparently, we have the sole option of deciding if we want to uh, awaken this Krogan, this experiment. And I will say, we do. Uh, it actually is kind of interesting to note, though. We have four dossiers right now. Dossier, or, or had four dossiers with only one remaining. Now, if you don't wake up this Krogan, you're actually allowed to do more side missions and stuff before a mandatory story mission. And I would recommend uh, doing as many side quests as you possibly can before that. However, we are, we're not going to do that. We're going to just get these dossiers done and, and move on. So we have Okira's dead, but his genetically engineered Krogan soldier remains preserved in his grow tank. Let's go ahead and research these things real quick that we can do, including the sniper rifle damage and the prototype here for Krogan vitality. Researching those very quickly. Morden isn't going to have anything to say to us. I'll let you work. So we'll leave him alone and we'll head out over here. And I think Kelly might have something to say to us. Is it true we have a pod containing a baby Krogan down in the cargo hold? Yep. Not a baby. He's a full-grown super soldier ready for combat. Please be careful if you decide to birth him. His personality is completely unknown. Anyway, how may I help? That'll be all. I'll be here. Commander, you've received We have a new messages that we can check as well. From Kate Bowman, who you might remember from Terra Nova, the colony that we saved in the Bring Down the Sky DLC from Mass Effect 1. Apparently, she called in some favors and found out where we are. There's a big celebration planned for the anniversary of the saving of Terra Nova, and they wanted her to be a memorial because they thought she was dead, Shepard was dead, but Shepard's fine. Anyways, won't be able to invite us to come give a speech or anything because we're undercover, but she's glad that uh, that we're alive. She's very thankful that we saved Terra Nova. And we also get a message from Martin Burns, the chairman of the Subcommittee for Transhuman Studies, who refused to give the L2 biotics reparations, was taken hostage. We ended up de defusing the situation. Both the L2 biotics and the chairman survived. And come to find out, he's thanking us because he decided uh, to give reparations to those L2 biotics and uh, kind of changed his view about things and how those, are, how those are viewed. So he was thanking us for saving him, but we have another mission to do. Let's go ahead and see if Joker has anything to say to us before we go and awaken this baby Krogan, which he doesn't, but he will after we do this. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's see if we're going to awaken this baby. So we can head down to engineering where we'll see salvage Krogan pod. And coming out over here, we'll take the left, head into port cargo where we're able to find potential our newest party member. Let's go ahead and activate the breeding pod. The subject is stable, Shepard. Integration with onboard systems was seamless. What can you tell me about this guy? Anything unusual? The subject is an exceptional example of the Krogan species, with fully formed primary, secondary, and tertiary organs where applicable. No defects of any kind, aside from the genetic markers of the genophage present in all Krogan. I cannot judge mental functioning. Can he see anything in there? Does he know where he is? Unlikely. Current neural patterns indicate minimal cognition. Barring shipwide power loss, the nutrients in the tank could sustain him for over a year. Any idea how dangerous this guy is? He is a Krogan, Shepard. If you are asking whether he is actively hostile, I don't have the necessary data to answer. Okir's technology could impart data, not methods of thinking. The subject may know of his views, but would not necessarily share them. Interesting. Let's go ahead and let's open the tank. Stand by. I'm gonna open the tank and let him out. Cerberus protocol is very clear regarding untested alien technology. He's either a powerful addition to the crew or a time bomb. I'd rather deal with it now. Very well, Shepard. The controls are online. The switch and consequences are yours.
die. I need a name. <laughs> I'm Commander Shepard, and I don't take threats lightly. I suggest you relax. Not your name. Mine. I'm trained. I know things. But the tank, Okir couldn't implant connection. His words are hollow. Warlord, legacy, grunt. Grunt. Grunt was among the last. It has no meaning. It'll do. I am Grunt. If you are worthy of your command, prove your strength and try to destroy me. You wouldn't prefer Okir or Legacy? It's short. Matches the training in my blood. The other words are big things I don't feel. Maybe they fit your mouth better. I feel nothing for Okir's clan or his enemies. I'll do what I'm bred to do. Fight and determine the strongest. But his imprint has failed. Without a reason that's mine, one fight is as good as any other. Might as well start with you. And we have a few options of things to do here. We could use an intimidate option. My command is your reason. Or, as usual, let's charm him. I have a good ship and a strong crew. A strong clan. You'd make it stronger. If you're weak and choose weak enemies, I'll have to kill you. Our enemies are worthy. No doubt about that. Hmm. <sighs> That's acceptable. I'll fight for you. I'm glad you saw reason. Oh. <laughs> Offer one hand, but arm the other. Why, Shepard? If I find a clan, if I find what I, I want, I will be honored to eventually pit them against you. And I'm happy to introduce Grunt, the newest party member to join our squad. And we get nine Paragon points. Let's go Shepard. ahead and immediately ask him about some upgrades. Anything in your tank imprints that can make use of the resources we found? Hmm. Might have something I could put together. Don't know how useful it will be. Oh, it'll be useful, all right. Prototype Krogan shotgun, giving him the Claymore Heavy Shotgun, an incredibly powerful gun that is strong enough to break a human's arm. Shepard. Let's ask him if he knows anything about the Collectors. Did Okir give you any imprints about the Collectors? I see blurry ships, guesswork about strength. Nothing to help pick a weak spot and tear. Okir spent all his time on old hatreds. Whatever he had, it was used up when he made me. And what about the squad? What do you think about the crew? Good bunch if they stay out of my way. Dead bunch if they don't. Train them good if you want to take on Collectors. Some of these aliens are too smooth. Agreed. And what do you think about the mission? What are your thoughts about our mission? I fight. Doesn't matter who for. Perfect. Just checking in. Making sure you're acclimatizing. Humans talk too much. Like the tank. Come back later. All right. That's all for now. Shepard. There you go. Grunt. Now a new party member that we have and an incredibly useful one. Pretty much the tank of the game, if you will. You can build him in different ways, but really where he shines is his ability to take punishment. And he's really the only person that we can talk to right now, but we are going to go ahead and head up to the CIC, the Combat Information Center, where we can check in with Kelly now that we've Maybe awoken the Krogan. Things? I don't know what to feel about Grunt. My psych reports were for Oak here. We have no guarantees that Grunt is mentally stable. True. I get the feeling he just doesn't care about anything, including who lives or dies. I'll protect you. Don't worry, Kelly. I wouldn't let him touch you. If there's any touching being done, you'd better be involved. Anyway, what's up? Oh, damn, girl. All right. That'll be all. Take care. And we have new messages at our private terminal that we can read. One from the elusive man who says... I see you awakened Okira's Krogan, a dangerous decision, but you've got free reign on this operation. If you're certain he'll be a useful member of the team, you've got my support. We need every weapon we can get in this battle. If this grunt proves unreliable and has to be put down, don't lose the body. He's based at least partially on collector technology and could offer useful genetic data, but again, you're in charge. You're darn tootin' I am, elusive man. Anyways, Joker now will definitely have something to say regarding the uh, the angry baby Krogan that is in our cargo bay that we don't know anything about, but he's perfect. You collect stray cats as a kid? Because we really needed a mega Krogan, so thanks for dragging him home. Yep. That's it for now. See you, Commander. 
and my friends that is pretty much everything that we could do in today's episode anyways uh i oh i'm so glad to have this episode recorded and done and i'm hoping that it works and i edited because i like i said i recorded this episode probably four or five times um and it's not an easy it's just, it's just not an easy dossier to get done at all so it was it took some work anyways we can look at our squad we have two squad points to spend that we're not going to but we are level 12 right now Corey Shepard, level 12 Vanguard. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres. An even bigger shout out to those of you on patreon.com slash missile online. Thank you for your patience and your support on this series. Uh, we're going to be starting Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes very soon on YouTube uh, while Mass Effect 2 is also happening. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that series as well. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to Jador and her army of cloned Krogan. Bye, everyone.